several companies caught the wave of anti-short squeezers on the final days of January 2021. We will go over a few of them in this video. And if you stick around till the end, we will let you know the best ways to make money in any market. So be sure to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And well, let's dive right in. But before we do, you're watching Finance Squared. I'm your host, Derek West. And on Finance Squared, we love to talk about everything personal finance related, including stocks, bonds, REITs, etc. And some stocks nearly squared themselves in the whole madness that was the GameStop anti-squeeze campaign of 2021. It was a wild and crazy time. Let's go over what happened, shall we? Starting in January 2021, the brick and mortar gaming company GameStop saw the price of their stock rise to absurd levels, making some people who had invested in the stock with the thought that they had good fundamentals, very wealthy, along with people who were simply trying to drive up the price of their stock to counter short sellers. During this time, they were not the only company or company stock who benefited from this movement of retail investors who felt that certain stocks were undervalued or to counter institutional short sellers who felt that the stock was gonna fall. Several other companies saw movements in their stock prices as well, including some well-known names that many people presumed were not doing all that well in their business dealing. But first though, what is short selling exactly? And how was it going to affect the prices of these stocks and thus the fortunes of these companies and their investors? Well, short selling is one of a number of exotic trading techniques. The technique, of short selling is executed by borrowing a stock from someone who has the stock to begin with, then selling it immediately for the current market value or the price that it's at when you borrow it anyway, hoping that the value of that stock falls while you hold it. The amount that it falls determines how profitable you are using this technique. You then buy back the, you then buy the stock back at the new lower price and give it back to the person or institution you borrowed it from plus any interest you had to pay to borrow the stock from them. This is an advanced technique that can be very profitable. It is one way in which you can make money when a stock or market segment or even an entire indices is in bear territory. You can execute the same strategy with let's say a Dow Jones Industrial Average short ETF, basically borrowing an ETF at the current market price, selling it at that price, waiting for the market to go lower. And when it gets to a certain level, buy that ETF again at the new lower price, giving back the ETF and interest from whoever you borrowed it from. This technique can be used to execute against commodities, bonds, stocks, televisions, if I'm not mistaken. But what about GameStop? Well, like I mentioned, for some time leading up to January 2021, some hedge funds, namely Melvin Capital, Citadel LLC, Point72 Asset Management, among others, were shorting the stock of GameStop, among others. We'll get into those in a few moments, so hang in there. Institutional and retail investors for some time have been executing short selling against companies they feel will eventually lose value. GameStop is among a number of brick and mortar companies that has had its revenue shrink in recent years. Most due to online distribution of many products, including video games, GameStop's main revenue producer. In addition to the fact that COVID-19 restrictions have limited foot traffic into their stores, limiting their ability to make sales at their various uh, on-site locations. Well, some investors on the Reddit subreddit, Wall Street Bets, feel that GameStop was indeed an undervalued company, in contradistinction from the institutional investors who felt that they who felt that the share price would continually fall. Pointing to the joining of Chewy.com CEO Ryan Cohen onto the company board as evidence of a possible turnaround. Other Reddit subreddit users saw an opportunity to put a short squeeze on the institutional investors and make a small or large profit in the meantime. But what is a short squeeze? Short squeezes? Short squeezes are the number one risk for anyone who takes a short position in a stock. Because if you sell a stock expecting to buy it back at a new lower price, but instead the price goes higher, then when you're required to return the stock, you have to buy it back at the new higher price. And you simply can't hold out forever waiting for the stock to fall to a new lower level because brokerages will make you have the collateral to pay for the transaction should it continue to go bad. And eventually you just won't have the collateral if the price of the stock keeps going up. And the higher the price goes, the more collateral you are required to have. And that is effectively what was happening to a ton of hedge funds that were shorting GameStop and other companies. Retail investors saw an opportunity and caused the price of GameStop to keep going higher and higher and higher. Till at some point, Robinhood and other stock brokerage firms suspended trading of these stocks so that your average retail investor couldn't continue to invest in them. Now, there is some concern over the fact that Robinhood and others stopped people from participating in the market. And there has been announced investigations by attorney generals from Texas and New York, with more coming, possibly. In addition to class action lawsuits accusing Robinhood of disallowing participation in, in a market and favoring institutional investors over retail investors. The way that plays out in the next few weeks will be interesting, but what is also interesting is the effect that this had on other smaller, quote unquote, undervalued companies, some of which saw their prices rise to close to and over 500% and more. Which companies were these? AMC Theaters, 
Now, we all know that the in-person movie viewing business, along with many other entertainment venues, were hit especially hard by the pandemic and resulting pandemic restrictions. Institutional investors, including hedge funds, took note of this also, and as a result, bet big that the price of the shares of such companies, for example, AMC, were going to take a hit over the next couple of years. Since January 5th, the value of AMC stock has risen from $2.16 to over $13. Several investors have cashed out on its run-up, making quite a bit of money in the process, including private equity firm Silver Lake. The firm was able to clear a profit of roughly $125 million by selling 44.4 million newly minted shares of the struggling, of the struggling movie chain operator. This all can be found in a filing with the Security and Exchange Commission. Even with this new windfall of cash for AMC theaters, me personally, I would not expect the price to remain at these highs for any amount of time as the chain is clearly struggling and the entire business that they are in may be in for a rough couple of months. As more and more users get their movies from venues like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu Plus, Disney Plus, and others, unless they find a way to buy and own one of those streaming services, I doubt that their business prospects will turn around. So I expect the price of their stocks to fall. In fact, barring any more short squeezing in the long term, I would think this would be a good stock to short. And then there's the tale of BlackBerry. Now, BlackBerry, I'm still surprised that they're around, but some folks within their company made off like bandits during the short squeeze madness that occurred earlier in January, rising to a high of $28.77 on the 27th of January. At the time of filming this video, they're probably at around $18.12, but BlackBerry was thought to have stopped making their own phone hardware devices, but to have transitioned into a software services and security services firm. They have acquired numerous third-party companies and technologies to help them in their transition. Three influential officers in the company, however, do not seem to have the faith in it as some of the short sellers seem to, and some of the folks on Wall Street bets. After the stock more than doubled, the chief financial officer, the chief marketing officer, and one other officer whose title I cannot find, they sold a combined $1.7 million of BlackBerry stock. Now, they might know something that we don't know, but based on earnings forecasts, and past performance of its phone product and some of its hardware and some of its software and security services, a price point of $15 a share is nearly 100 times forward earnings and eight times next year's projected sales. Now that wouldn't be a big deal for a high growth stock with plenty of ceiling, to with plenty of ceiling. but unless something else is in the works for BlackBerry, those days are well behind us. Then there's the Naked Brand Group. Naked Brand Group saw quite the run-up following the short squeeze fanaticism. The Naked Brand Group, which is mostly into apparel and swimwear, you know, they design and manufacture and market set apparel and swimwear, as well as a portfolio of company-owned licensed brands across sections of consumers and market segments. Well, one of those, one of the only brands that I've heard of that they own is Fredericks of Hollywood. But frankly, I'm not much of a clothier, so don't take that into account. But the Naked Group, they also made a killing on the short squeeze and may in fact come out of this with a new outlook. The group was not really doing all that bad despite being targeted by institutional investors for shorting purposes. With revenue rising, clothing and other branded items were up until that point. As a matter of fact, they issued 29.42 million shares of their own stock at $1.70 each, which should bring them about $50 million to invest into their business. And those weren't the only companies either. The Cost Corporation, Nokia, Fossil Group Incorporated, all those companies, some of whom saw the value of their stocks increase by over 1,000%, all benefited from the moves that the short squeezers on Reddit pulled off. The jury is still out on if the positions of these companies will change if hedge funds and other institutional investors change up their investment strategies and don't focus on shorting positions in the stock market, but instead focus on long positions. Long positions, by the way, are the typical positions that investors take, which is to own stock, assuming that its value will appreciate. If the hedge funds start to do that, will the short squeezers become short sellers? looking to do the very technique that hedge funds were trying to do, but failed to do, once retail investors get wind of it and started making counter moves. Well, no one can really know. One thing is for sure. Investing using such risky trading strategies is not for the faint of heart or the meager of bank account if you're a new investor. Stick with the simple stuff. Invest in index funds, ETFs, maybe REITs, maybe owning stocks that you believe will in the long term appreciate, given you think that their technology and fundamentals represent growth and revenue for the company. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't short stocks or buy options or puts, which are actually types of options. I'm saying that if you don't understand them, definitely stay away. And even if you do, start with the basics and learn more about advanced trading techniques as your knowledge grows. And also, subscribe to this channel as we strive to teach and learn more about personal finance and things like trading options, shorting stocks, puts, and so on. And be sure to click that notification bell as we have more great videos like this one on the way in the very near future. We're putting together a video series of videos on options and puts as we speak. So be sure to have that notification bell turned on so you don't miss it when it drops. And keep in mind, a goal without a plan is a wish. 
A goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take action on your short squeeze philosophy by buying into stocks targeted for short sale by hedge funds or not and just buy an ETF. And I'll see you next time. Peace.